Well guys, looking ahead to our third European second if we're talking Brexit terms, but get that the fuck. Let's go with third. Third event in Europe next week. Seven, the collective, the cult, Q Factory, Amsterdam on a Saturday night. I'm so buzzing to get there with my fellow crew members. We don't get out much, but this is gonna be a special, special night. And when Seven are on the brand, you know it's gonna be done right. Underground driving the most freshest upfront club orientated music on the menu. So let's kick off. What does trance mean to me? Trance to me is not the sound of the music. It's not the key, not the structure. Trance to me is the feeling that I get when I hear it. Um, so for me, trance music is basically emotions, evoking emotions of happiness, sad, melancholic feelings. A lot of tracks that I, I know you guys wouldn't class as trance, they trance me out though. Um, so it's a feeling for me and not an actual sound, but a feeling I get where I lose myself and I forget I'm in the room. Um, and yeah, for me that would be trance music. So the world is about to end and you're organizing the last ever party. Which DJs would you book to play? Okay, so let's start. I think Sven Vath, one of my favorites, would definitely have control of one of the stages. He's one guy that can incorporate everything from emotions to driving techno. Uh, for me, he, play, he still plays music that trances me out, so I'd be happy there. Um, he crosses all of the boards, so he would definitely have control of one of the stages. Uh, let's throw Orbital in there for a sunrise set. And before the big moment, let's have Judas Priest fucking smash our way to the fucking pearly gates. So yeah, I think uh, Sven Vath, uh, Orbital and Judas Priest to get us up there. What is your greatest fear? My greatest fear is the being forgotten um, or forgetting. Yeah, forget, forgetting or being or being forgotten by any of my loved ones um, is probably my greatest fear. What is your earliest memory? My earliest memory would be probably falling off my Blue Rally crocodile bike when I was about four years old and my dad um, doing the whole null stabilizers and uh, I think I must have got um, maybe a few, <laughs> must have got uh, a few feet along and then come and crashing and burning a uh, close encounter with the curb. Still got them, but uh, yeah, that would be my, my, my earliest memories. I was maybe four years old, three or four years old. So yeah, quite, quite, um, quite early on. Quite traumatic, actually. Um... Have you ever said I love you and not meant it? I have not told anyone I love them until I met Lindsay. Um, I'd never say it without meaning it and uh, didn't even know what it was to be honest until I met Lindsay. Um, so I've never said it until now. So Lindsay, I love you. What is your guiltiest pleasure? Oh, R&B, yeah, I'm gonna say it, R&B, Usher, Craig David, um, all that lot, but country and western too, I have to say. Um, a Kid Rock, Kenny Rogers, Orkney Boy at Heart, so that would be my guilty pleasure. What's your all-time favourite movie? All-time favourite movie, Last Samurai, without a doubt, Last Samurai. Um, what a performance, Mr Tom Cruise and uh, Hans Zimmer on the soundtrack. Uh, absolutely fantastic uh, movie, yeah. If you could change one thing about the world... Uh, a fresh pair of socks to every human being every morning. That's how you start the day. What is the most important lesson that life has taught you? Um, uh, honesty is the best policy. In a film about your life, who would play you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have to say, um, Mr. Mark Renton, aka Ewan McGregor, would, um, would certainly play the part um, big shoes to fill, but I'm sure they would get well and truly filled right in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Ewan McGregor would be that one, I think. You're only allowed one alcoholic drink for the rest of your life. What would you choose? Um, oh, I could always go a bottle of Mad Dog, MD2020. If you were an animal, what would you be? Probably like a fucking dragon or something. <clears throat> Like one of the proper medieval sort of 
Warlord Dragons. Never fully a fag again either. Which track from your back catalogue do you think best defines your sound? Um, that's a difficult one because my sound is always changing and um, I'm never in one place too long. But I think um, if we if there's one track that represents the backbone of my sound, that would probably be um, Didgeridoo actually. Um, has those spikes of um, spikes of madness, um, but there's a, um, a feel of uh, emotion in there and um, a bit of a, a bit of melody to uh, to to bring a few smiles on on faces, but also that 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 little flash in the pan as well, the bit of, the bit of madness. So I think Didgeridoo probably um, best sums up my sound at the moment. When did you last cry and why? Um, uh, I, I quite regularly cry when I think about my grandpa and I lost him in the summer so um, yeah that's quite an easy that's quite an easy answer actually so if you weren't a DJ producer what would you be? Um, I really wanted to be a footballer um, that was my sort of uh, A plan and then I discovered uh, music and then I discovered alcohol and such and such so uh, yeah now playing fives twice a week if I'm lucky um, but I think football would have been my uh, go-to career um, probably less stressful one as well but uh, face the music but yeah plan A would have been um, a footballer I think um, or probably just an apprenticeship somewhere back in Orkney so yeah this uh, followed them um, Follow the, the dream and here I am now. What's your favourite country to travel in? Um, if we're talking about travelling and not performing, then I have to say Bali is one hell of a beautiful country to be in. Um, any countries that really age away, probably Phuket. Phuket's amazing, Thailand. Let's go with Phuket, Thailand. And I'll next be there for Unconscious Festival 7 in February. My best party memory from Amsterdam, uh, without a doubt, would be uh, me and my best mate, James, who I've grown up, grown up with, known this guy since I was four or five years old, went to nursery with him. And he's not into the music scene, um, he, but he's always shown me always shown me music. We've always bounced off each other with, with tunes, whether that from trance to R&B to, to whatever. But um, he's he uh, came with me on a trip to Amsterdam two years ago, and we booked a... Uh, chapel we literally booked a fucking chapel to stay in it was like a renovated michelangelo paintings on the ceilings gothic big ca candle forge it was this shit was beauty and the beast it was fucking i don't know what year it's from but it, it was old it was fucking old school medieval and um renovated into an apartment and we stayed in this chapel uh for ade for three nights and we basically must have got half of AD back to this fucking cha pa chapel. We had people from Cream, people from some of the biggest clubs in the States, ditching their plans, ditching their meetings to come to this fucking chapel that me and my friend James had booked. We just ran the show. It was an amazing AD 2017. Um, and uh, <laughs> what, a, what an experience. So I would say me and Chimzo renting the fucking chapel in Amsterdam, ADE 2017, and running the show would be my best memory of uh, of Amsterdam. Just, yeah, going for it. Just absolutely running it. Name three tracks you are 100% gonna play at Seven Amsterdam. Brand new release on Victims Helpline with Gary Maguire, Dog With Sex Dex, which has been ripping the clubs apart over the summer for me. Peak time, summertime, sizzler. And I'll be definitely playing that in Amsterdam on the 30th. Dog with sex decks, sex decks with Gary Maguire. I'll definitely be playing Table Dennis. Brand new record I've signed to Vegas Hubline from Sam Jones. It's a mind wrecker, so uh, watch out for that. And probably a new rework I've been uh, testing out in the clubs over the last couple of uh, weeks. Uh, it's an old track by Egyptian Empire, the horn track. Don't know if you guys remember that. It came out on... Um, FFRR, I want to say, Pete Tong's label, uh, back in the 90s, early 90s, big rave, breakbeat, prodigy, 
type of record and uh, I've edged it out a bit and uh, it's, a, it's a wee pumper in my set so uh, my cheeky rework of uh, the Egyptian Empire, the horn track, which I'll most definitely be playing in Amsterdam on the 30th of November. If you've not got your tickets yet, you need to get them now. It's gonna be a massive, massive show, not to be missed. We're all gonna be there, all under one roof. When does that ever happen? So it's seven, Amsterdam, the Q Factory, 30th of November, and I'll see you there. Cheers.